Hey everybody, welcome back to another edition of NAHL Coaches Corner. My name is Alex Curious. Today we sit down with the head coach of the Minnesota Wilderness, Mr. John Valancourt. John, how are you doing today? I'm very good. Thank you for having me. Good. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us. John, let's hop right to it. Uh, give us an idea of what's happening currently in your area. I know Minnesota has been a, a hot spot, uh, but give us an idea up in Cloquet. What is going on? Are, are things open? Uh, just give us a, a quick view of what's happening. Sure. Well, obviously everything kind of, you know, with how things panned out when the pandemic was finally declared and we canceled the season, um, everything got shut down. So, you know, for myself, like the rest of us, the coaches out there, we all, for the first time in our career, we're stuck at home and we're not able to travel or recruit or, or do too much. Um, we haven't had a ton of cases up in this area. We, there were a couple in Superior, a uh, few in Duluth, but we haven't had very many. I'm pretty fortunate. My wife is a, a firefighter up here as well as EMT, so I kind of get the inside scoop on a lot of um, calls that are being made. So we haven't had too much in this area, but obviously a lot of precautions have been made. Um, with everything going down, especially in the cities, to make sure that, you know, if any does come. The, the big worry for a lot of residents up here is a lot of people come up north for their summer cabins. So that was the biggest worry with a lot of people traveling north to northern Minnesota that uh, I might bring the virus more so up here. But we haven't had too many cases so far. Um, but everything in now is starting to reopen. Uh, and we're hoping that, uh, you know, Minnesota's done, I think, a relatively very good job managing through this crisis um so hopefully everything continues to reopen with uh, relatively ease well that's good to know that uh your area is largely unaffected uh unlike some major metropolitan areas uh, the next question for you john is uh the minnesota wilderness were part of a really good year this year for the north american hockey league a record number of division one commitments approaching a record number of ncaa commitments overall and i'm wondering from your perspective, what type of work are you, uh, General Manager Dave Boyce, anyone else in the organization doing behind the scene to make sure that everyone who can get a commitment leaves there with a commitment? Sure. I mean, there's a tremendous amount of work that goes behind the scenes that um, players and parents will never see. I mean, that's just part of the job, obviously. Uh, Mr. Boyce does a fantastic job, obviously, being well-connected, being in this uh, part of this league for such a long time. And you know, for us, it's just more so like putting a lot of video together and making a lot of phone calls, making sure that players are given the opportunity to have that, um, they'll be part of that selection process. You know, when it comes down to it, as coaches, managers, our job is to provide players with the resources and the opportunities and to make those connections. But at the end of the day, all the credit has to go to the player once he makes that commitment because they've got to put all the work in. Um, so, you know, we need to facilitate those opportunities and we work quite a bit behind the scenes to make sure it happens. But at the end of the day, when a player does make commitments, um, schools are very picky on who they choose and a lot of work goes into it. So all the credit has to go to that player. But for the most part, it's just a lot of video and a lot of conversations um, just to let the player have the opportunity to start making those connections. And then it's on the player and the school to kind of see if it's the right fit for them. Uh, you guys were obviously uh, a part of a central division that, again, was a very tight race uh, from the start of the season to when the season was canceled. Um, you're, you had a team that was uh, quite a bit of veteran heavy. Uh, you've got some good veteran guys leaving for the NCAA. So uh, when you're looking to build a team for this upcoming season and you started with the supplemental draft on top of your tenders, what were you looking for and how happy were you with the selections? Overall, we're, we're very happy with the players that we selected. I mean, we went through um, quite a bit of research on the guys. I mean, it was a short draft, but with that being said, it was, I think, a little more competitive because everyone had only the three picks to make. Um, so going into this offseason, we were very much an older team. We have, what, 10 guys moving on. So we wanted to not necessarily find a bunch of older guys to bring back in, but find a few guys who we felt would have a year at least, a year or two with us. So all the players we drafted were two of them were O1s and one's O2. Um, they'll both be going to the USHL first to go down that path and see that opportunity. But we're pretty confident if they all three came to play for us or one of the three, um, they will all be very key parts of our program for not only, you know, the upcoming season, but hopefully the year after. So 
as we go into the offseason, we wanted to, you know, rebuild the program because we were so older. So we've got some good younger players coming in for their uh, senior year, basically, of junior hockey. So now we're trying to find some younger guys that can really come to a program and start developing it, um, as well as building a championship team for guys where, as you know very much, like there's players that come to our league and they might only be one-year guys because they go to USHL. I mean, Aaron Myers is the same way, and he's a player that wasn't drafted or tender in North America. He played one year in our league and went to USHL and was – got a D1 commitment. Um, so it's a little bit of a risk maneuver when you start picking those players. But I thought, you know, Evan Bushy was a player coming out of Thief Falls. We're really excited about him as a defenseman. Um, we're to see how he does in USHL so that can go either way. Uh, Mitchell Josh, the Canadian player, you know, he's played already two years of junior hockey up in the MJ, had 71 points last season. But I think he's a player that's a D1 commit, um, no doubt. And if he decides that's going to be – this is going to be a place to be – Waterloo isn't the right fit, then we're excited to have him. Um, Primo, you know, obviously Primo himself played in the BC last year as a kid that um, from Michigan went up to the BC, played a year, now he's coming back to our league. We feel like he's ready to make the next jump. Um, already D1 committed kid, so he's just going to make sure he's developing the right way. So all three of those guys would be great for a program. This is a right fit for them to get ready for college hockey to help um, complete their game. Well, at the same time, I think there would be huge parts of our program and key pieces moving forward as we make a run toward, obviously, um, the Robs Cup. John, you're a guy that uh, really got your foot in the door with coaching in the NA3HL and made the uh, Cooley Region chill uh, and lacrosse freeze a very successful program uh, to the point where they were cup contenders every year. And then ultimately that led to you getting the opportunity with the Minnesota Wilderness. I'm wondering, as you look back on your time in the NA3HL, just how important it is uh, in the hockey landscape, because I know that uh, the Wilderness utilized many NA3HL players this year. Uh, you had a couple NA3HL alums on the team, as do most NAHL teams. And I'm just wondering, uh, as somebody who developed there, uh, knows what type of player you're getting, how important is the NA3HL to the NAHL? I think it's critical for us. Um, you know, a lot of players that maybe aren't quite ready, but they need a year or even half the season. We look at Blake Holmes. He only played half the season. And NA3 for myself before coming up here um, had a little bit of a slow start when he came up here. But you look at last year, he was, what, fifth on our team from points as a defenseman. So obviously the NA3 is a great place to develop players, get them ready, as well as being a place where I think our program, I think I put up more NA3 players than any other team in North American League um, last season just with injuries and whatnot. I mean, I think it's a league that does a great job developing players, does a great job getting players ready, as well as getting players college opportunities early. Um, as well as opportunity to North America. So I think it's critical for our league to use NA3 as a resource. Um, you know, obviously I'm a product of that. My two years coaching in that league really helped prepare me for this level. Um, I've been very fortunate to have great mentorship with Mr. Boyce, obviously, and the ownership here has been fantastic. But what got me ready to coach at this level uh, for the responsibilities and the workload and just kind of mentality what you need to do as a head coach was the opportunity of coaching NA3. And I think it's a tremendous place for players to develop and get ready for our level, as well as get exposed to college programs um, or for us to pull them up. Finally, John, uh, in your opinion, uh, you've been doing this a few years now at the North American Hockey League level. Just what are, the, what are some of the best things about being a head coach in this league? Well, it's a privilege first to coach the game of hockey and be part of it. And I think second, it's an honor to coach in North American League. A lot of coaches want to coach in this league because it is, you know, is the league of opportunity. And for myself, I can vouch for that. I mean, this has been a huge opportunity for me. I came here to be an associate head coach. I um, was very fortunate to be offered a head coaching position by Mr. Boynton and I had the mentorship from him when I first came in because it it's a big change even from the tier three level. Um, but I think if you look at the people within our league, whether it's the coaches, you as a staff, um, the people in this league is probably the first and foremost. This league is just has great human beings in it, great character people. And as coach, that's the first thing we look for when we look for players. It's the same thing we look for when we look at staff members or people within our league. I think it's just great people, first and first of all. And the second part, I think I just – second most important I see is just the opportunities for our players as well as the coaching staff. Um, but the players, the exposure, the opportunities they get playing within this league. I mean, if you look at the commitment levels that come out of the North American League, when you look at kids like – you know, just kids from our program, obviously Aaron Myers, not drafted, uh, not tendered. Division one committed kid playing USHL. Caleb Johnson is a goalie. This is 
fantastic league for goalies, wasn't drafted, wasn't tender, came to our program through the tryout process, became a Division One committee kid, um, USHL. We even look at, you know, look at our pre-draft camps that we do or the combines that we do through North America League. Um, Adrian, you know, Nathan, Oh, Nathan Andrew, excuse me, came through. Um, he's a kid that we saw at our pre-draft. He was actually on Bismarck's team. We drafted him. Um, he's going to St. Scholastica. So this league provides players so many opportunities to move on to the next level. And I think it's a credit to you and your staff, obviously, and the coaches and the compete level in this league that shows that this is a great league to get players to the next level. But it's a privilege and honor to coach in North American League. And I remind myself that every day. Great interview, John. Great words. And uh, we certainly wish you the best of luck the rest of the summer and look forward to seeing you and the Wilderness on the ice come September. Uh, thank you again for joining us today. Thank you very much. Stay safe. That's John Valancourt here on another edition of NAHL Coaches Corner.